Previously on Chicken Police. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. She was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. My mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler, or as most people know him, Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Back into the lion's den. But to be honest, lions don't come all the way down here these days. Just take a deep breath, Sonny, and turn on the bullshit counter. Just take a deep breath, Sonny, and turn on the bullshit counter. Back in the day, I used to patrol the city's streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny, what you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so picky, sure, bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages, and some drunk pigs in the basement. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. 
Don't mention it, Boss Bird. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for it. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know. Got this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Uh, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <sighs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Ugh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so, tell me. What's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ah, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Ah, <sighs> all right. Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zips coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Oh yeah, like last time? Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Ah, Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little, and it smells too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Ah, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what? <laughs> Just kidding, sort of. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. 
Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss, I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. Look at these two simpletons. <laughs> they don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild god's sake, don't dare tell them. I already tried, but nothing happened. Figures. How many days did we have our first squad car? About three, I think. Before we crashed into that tank of acid? We? <laughs> You crashed it. Don't blame it on me, Marty. I was unconscious, if I remember correctly. And that's your problem, boss. You should be more careful with low-hanging concrete blocks next time. Yeah, I've been paying attention to that ever since. We can't avoid speaking with the chief first. And it would be nice to say goodbye to Monica, too. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Midnight had passed and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main street toward downtown. The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. They hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Ah, so this is the famous Tsar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, Boss Bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, Boss Bird.
Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful, chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I... Uh, uh... Oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Oh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Huh, I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Cause it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. Look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Averia. Of all that's furry, whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. Hey, that's your- Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it. You're reading my mind, boss. Honestly? I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. Hmm, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. Ooh, teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. One day, neon signs will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Luck off, Sonny. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high-quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Well, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah. Hilarious. Condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. 
Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Yeah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window? <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. It would be best to board it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may be run down, but somehow I still feel like it's honest. Sure. You can live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place, too. Has a similar stink. Believe me, Marty, I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised? When was the last time you've slept? I don't know. Uh, you're. I guess you're right. I suppose two shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what... You know, this city's outgrown us. Why do you say that? Well, don't you feel it? The whole place squeezing you. The polluted air, the sirens, and the smell of cordite. Ah, don't be such a drama queen. It's not the world that's changed, it's us. Clawville's Clawville. We're just getting older. No, there really is something. You know the feeling of foreboding, of something wrong, of something bad on the horizon. Ah, oh, you're screwing my mood. Yeah, but I'm not sorry. No shit. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already started working on my will, but I realize I'd have to leave everything to you, so clock that. Huh. Pity. I've always wanted a chicken coop smelling like old socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty.
I'm gonna clean up here one day. Yeah. I don't even know where the key is. That fella's built like a brick shit house. I don't think we'll be able to just sneak past him. Wanna bet? Ah, uh, okay, okay. It's okay, Bertha. Maybe next time. What was that? Did you bring Big Bertha with you? Gods, no. What are you thinking? What idiot would bring a shotgun to a club? Was that a rhetorical question? My dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways. So, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have s s something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. for the show the girls New Year's Eve's once a year right and we're not on duty have I asked how Laura's doing whoa hey I, <laughs> I was just kidding okay my relationship with Laura is unwavering like the rhino beauty on this picture interesting taste you've got feathers scales or dermal armor a lady's a lady my friend thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh, that's it? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman, and also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but... It is even more inconvenient for me, sir, but... This place doesn't like, uh, coppers. Forgive this slang. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I am strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course I know who you are, sir. 
I give the news and more, and I must admit it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Featherland and Mr. Marty Machikin. The Bell of the Pantheres is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. So it would be terribly inconvenient for me if I had to use force on you, gentlemen. What? what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes, he is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me, I'll t -t 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 talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? How'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my pleasure to help you, as always. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. <laughs> Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. She has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember?
is Natasha. Well, it's us that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Uh... Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well, no one can see it. Sure. Maybe I have it with me now. <sighs> what? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right! And they've just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so drunk he forgot all about it. So? So we're confiscating it as evidence. <laughs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest, I've no objections. Hmm. Look, uh, Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. Tch, so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should feel honored, butt jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. There's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. 
Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with the Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clucked tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs, angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Oh boy. And you? Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The Rooster Coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sonny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh... He is, uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Something just the ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. I 
I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. Wessler. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Why didn't you just call the police? Huh? Why? What would have been the use of that? A few messages aren't enough for a case. You should know that. Harassment makes for a case. So do threats. Who were you trying to convince, Sonny, huh? They would have laughed in my face. Anyway, you know, the police station. Once I set foot in there, eh, I'm not coming out again. Your lawyers are too good for that, Eben. Yeah, I guess you're right, chicken. Why would anyone have reason to blackmail your girlfriend? I don't know, uh, maybe because she's my girlfriend? You think that's enough? It's plenty enough. Good point. Oh, are you finally getting to a point? Or do you really want to dig around in my private life? Because, uh, people who do that end up in the alley, if you catch my drift. Very much so, Mr. Wessler. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Are you and Natasha close? What do you mean exactly, chicken? Mr. Featherland, if you please. This could be important. How does she stand on the scale from sweetheart to wife? Oh, you have some nerve. Ask her that. I'm a gentleman, Mr. Featherland. Really? Maybe you can't comprehend it, but I can't ask for her hand until she offers it to me herself. How chivalrous. Get to the point, detective. Business going well, Mr. Wessler? Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Have there been similar threats in the past? Right to the point, yeah? Yeah, I get it. But sadly, this is a dead end, my friend. No, no threats like these, uh, whether you believe it or not. Well, it really seems like a dead end, so I'll just back up and try from a different angle. You do that. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> You know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the millions back then. Hm. She was a dancer. 
Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Yeah, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Goldtown. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Mm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. Is she completely alone when she's there at the weekend? As I've told you, Natasha's a free woman, eh? She's an adult. She doesn't need an escort. Or, uh, she didn't need one until now. Are you afraid for her? You know, a big star like her, alone in that house? I never said a black car doesn't drive by two or three times a day, but, uh, it's just caution. Huh. I'm not a monster after all, am I? I suppose not. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. You got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take... Forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. 
More or less. Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. <clears throat> you were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. Next time on Chicken Police. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. Clucking hell. Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Marty, that's enough. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly and even swim by God. One more word and I'll bite off your arm. Please tell me there's going to be a glorious shootout. Keep it straight, Sonny. Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow. Of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's stop it right there.